I should be wearing orange today to, you know, fazer panda <laughs> to match the palette. Oh. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today it's about using the palette I've made last week, so you haven't if you haven't watched that video, I'll leave a link up there and down there just so you can check it out and see the process of creating this palette and the reasons why I made it and yeah, things. So, in case you're new here, hi, my name is Francisca, I'm a Portuguese artist, printmaker. Oh. I like watercolors, I like printmaking, I freaking love colors. Today I'm using the palette I've made last week and it is a predominant, predominantly oh. orange palette and warm palette. I have a three colors I would consider orange even if one of one, two of them are called red in the packaging, I would consider those three orange. And I have a few earth tones. Uh, I'll explain all of that in last week's video, so... But I made two paintings, and the first one is a study of my dog in the kitchen. She was looking at broccoli on the table, and she freaking loves broccoli. She's a really cute dog. I decided to paint her from the picture I had, and the picture has two main source of, sources of light. It has the ceiling light, which is very yellow, and it has the stovetop light, which is very cold. Not exactly blue light, but it is quite bluish, especially in comparison with the ceiling light, which is very yellow. So I used a whole lot of the cobalt blue in the shadows because the shadows were being lit by the stovetop lamp light thing. So it's almost like I had a key light that was yellow and a field light that was blue. And for that reason, I used a whole lot of blue on her white fur, especially on the shadows. Not so much on the highlights because, as I said, the key light was the ceiling light, which was fairly yellow. And I used very little orange, if any at all, in this picture. Even though this palette was made to make me use orange, I basically used Caput Morton Violet for the darker tones on the table. I used Mijello Mission Gold Gold Brown mixed with Cobalt Blue for the shadows on her fur and for the bench stool. Yeah, the stool she is sitting on. And I also used it a bit on the table as well. And I used it still mixed with cobalt blue on her eyebrows and cheeks because she has a little bit of an yellow ochre like color. Then I used the English red which is also PR 101 just like the Caput Morton Violet and I used sepia from White Nights. Not exactly sure of the pigments because I don't remember but I think it was a two or three pigment mix. And then I used uh, the red that is on the palette, and the yellow. So for this study I used everything in an orange palette except for the orange pigments. That bothers me, but at the same time it, sh it's ju it just shows how used to not using orange I am and how hard it is to break out of the habit of just avoiding the orange pigments. I really enjoyed the way the um, red-brown from Miguel Mission Gold, the PBR25, I really enjoyed the way it worked with the rest of the colors. When you dilute it down, it looks almost like a dark red instead of looking like a brown. I don't know if this makes any sense. So. The darker you go with the PBR25, the more brown it looks, and the lighter you go, the more red it looks. So it's not just a question of value, it's also a question of saturation, in terms of color wheel and things. But yeah, I really, I really enjoyed the way that particular pigment worked, and I also really like the way the Mijello Mission Gold Gold Brown works with Cobalt Blue. I think it makes really beautiful mixtures and really nice separation and granulation. And I also freaking love 
Caput Martin Violet. I just really love that color. And a few of you in the comments of my last video said you would enjoy a comparison. I will have to wait a few... maybe a few months to do that because I need to do my research on the history of the pigment because I'm very interested in that. And I want to make a very interesting video instead of just a here's a comparison between brands i really wanted to make something more in depth so i want to do my research on that pigment and i want to do my research on where to buy some brands of that, that have that pigment and i really want to save up before buying that much paint and i need to do a little bit of research on how to then use that paint because I know I won't be able to use all of it but I will I guess sell it back to someone cheaper or maybe just give it to people I don't know maybe we could do a Caput Mortem giveaway I don't know I still need to figure out a bunch of things and logistics because I'm a small channel I don't make any any money from here so I, I just need to save up from my regular job to be able to pay for the things I use in the videos. So, yeah, I may do a Caput Mortem Violet video in the future. I still need to figure out a few things. I really want to do it now, especially if a few of you also are interested. Man, that's, that's fun. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh. But yeah, I really enjoyed using all those pigments. The things... I didn't like about this palette were it was really hard for me to mix a really dark a really really dark mix because the cobalt blue I forgot about this from the this issue from the white knights cobalt blue but the white knights cobalt blue is really chalky when you use too much i was using it to achieve dark tones with the sepia yeah that was not a great idea i should be using like an ultramarine blue or something i'm just not a big fan of it but what happened is that all my darks got mu kind of muddy and kind of dull instead of pretty and i'm really sad about that because I really enjoy being able to use strong, punchy, inky colors, but you can't really do that with this cobalt blue, and I forgot about it when I made the palette. And I really wanted that color. So yeah, I had a really hard time mixing darker colors, and I had a really hard time giving dimension to her, because I couldn't get a super dark thing without making it just powdery cobalt blue, you know what I mean? So I may swap it out in the future for an, an ultramarine or something like an idem in Dantzerum blue. When you use a palette, that's when you actually learn the limitations of it, not when you make it. So I'm really glad I made this video so I so I can tell you the limitations of a palette like that and so that you can understand that whenever you make a palette nothing is ever like absolutely final and done. You will always have to let your palettes evolve according to your needs when you are using it and according to the limitations you are willing to work around and the limitations you are not willing to work around. Like in this case, I am willing to work around not having many greens and not having many purples, but I'm not willing to work around not having any darks. And that's very important for you to know what are you willing to sacrifice when you use a limited palette? What are the challenges in terms of painting that you are willing to go through. I think it's more noticeable when you do a demo painting than when you do a mixing chart. And then I really wanted to talk to you about the one I did from Imagination because what I found really hard on that one was mixing a nice skin tone. It looks very easy when you look at the colors I have, but many of them are earth tones that are very opaque. And since they are so opaque, the particles end up being a little bit heavy. So on a, such a textured paper, 
it looks like I used super granulating colors on her skin and that looks a little bit odd. It's not the end of the world, I can just not draw portraits or I can find a different way of painting the portrait, but that one bothered me a little bit and then I had a whole lot of fun when drawing this girl. I had a whole lot of fun with the opaqueness, how transparent or opaque a color is, because so many of these pigments are super opaque. Caput Morton Violet, super opaque. The English Red, super opaque. Tis Titian Red, Tizian Red, I don't know how to say it. It is not super, super opaque, but it is kind of opaque. And then the... Um, the cobalt blue is a little bit opaque as well and I used that to my advantage because I had a bit of trouble drawing her arm. I haven't been practicing as much anatomy as I should and I haven't pre finished the figure drawing course from Broco yet and so I just nuked the arm. I just covered the arm with leaves. It was just supposed to be a very quick sketch, nothing major. I wanted to take advantage of this drawing to talk a little bit about influences, mostly about shows and games and books and things that influence not just your style but also your subject. I was drawing from imagination, I was drawing from whatever I... whatever the heck I felt like drawing. I was not really thinking about what I was doing when I did this. By looking at this drawing, I don't need to tell you where each element came from because you will understand once I talk about what I watched during this week. I watched quite a bit of Futurama. Futurama? Futurama. 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 Oh. Yeah, I watched Futurama and I love it. I think I'm really close to finishing. I'm like a season and a half until I finish it or a season until I finish it. I really like it and I really like Lila. When my boyfriend saw this drawing, he said, oh yeah, we watched Futurama this week. Right. And then he said, ooh, and we also watched Queen's Gambit, that's where the hair came from. <laughs> and I didn't even notice. So, as you can see, like anything you watch and anything you do will influence what you draw, regardless of what you are thinking about when you are drawing. I watched a lot of Queen's Gambit, and I watched a lot of Futurama during this week. I just went and drew a, a redhead with short hair that is a cyclops. Lila and Beth from Futurama and Queen's Gambit crossover. <laughs> oh. Simply because I was not paying attention, so... Oh. But yeah, I really enjoyed Queen's Gambit, I finished it already, I highly recommend it. It's on Netflix, not sponsored by the way. Yeah, I've been watching Futurama for four years and I haven't finished it yet. But I haven't dropped it and I love it and my favorite characters? Scruffy, the janitor. I freaking love Zoidberg. <laughs> the way he goes like woo 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 I just love it. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh ooh ooh. I started playing Hades. Like the colors are great, the line art is amazing, the the sound, the music is awesome and the gameplay obviously is really good. But yeah, the the way they made the game so visually and and musically appealing is just so nice. Can you tell I love that game? I've been really addicted. I For the past two days or three days, it's been really hard for me to record this video because I just wanted to play Hades. The artists that drew the art for Hades. I love the way they take advantage of dramatic lighting to give volume to 2D characters and the way they take advantage of stark black shadows to bring them back into 2D. So they give them volume but then they use such high contrast that they go back to being 2D. I highly recommend you check out those games and those series because I freaking love them. Oh. Thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for listening to me rant about watercolors and about video games and about series and things for like two hours, I don't know how long it has been. Thank you for listening to me and I hope to see you next week with a more interesting video for you. Thank you and I'll see you next week. Bye! Oh. So yeah, subscribe. <laughs> this was so awkward. <laughs> it's really hard.
Zu. Und bye.